Hello, everyone. My name is Jian Wu. I'm an assistant professor of computer science at Old Dominion University. I'm very honored to give the CNI for 2021 virtual membership meeting presentation. The topic of my presentation is towards aiding research by improving access to electronic thesis and dissertations from multiple domains. My collaborators are Mr. William Ingram at, in Virginia Tech University Libraries and Dr. Ed Fox in, University, in Virginia Tech uh, Computer Science Department. Our projects is supported by the Institutes of Museum and Library Services. Um, the main aim of this project is to investigate innovative ways um, of using machine learning and natural language processing and see how they can apply the to national corpus of electronic thesis and uh, dissertations. We identified uh, three research areas. Um, the first is the document analysis, information extraction, the second is adding value through automatic classification and summarization. We're also interested in building a, a, a better user services for digital libraries. So the core team of our research includes um, Bill Ingram, who is the principal investigator, and uh, Dr. Fox and uh, me are co-PIs of this project. We also have two PhD uh, graduate students, uh, Bipasha, in the Montebur. In addition to the core team, we also have uh, a number of uh, graduate and undergraduate stu students participating in this project. Some no um, notable students include Samuel Wooding, who was responsible for web crawling, Winston Shields, who was working on uh, web user interface design, Hamarsha, who was working on the um, metadata extraction, Sam Panaka, who designed the the figure extraction framework, Palak and Eman uh, were working on the uh, topic and subject classification. So in this presentation, I will first give a brief background introduction, and then I will focus on uh, how we uh, acquired the data and build the repository, and uh, uh, use the, the data we collected to build the language model every uh, talking about our results, conclusions, and briefly talking about the, the future work. So after the World War II, um, there has been an increase in the number of graduate degrees conferred in the United States. The right graph shows the, the number of doctoral degrees in the United States from uh, 1950 to 2019. So the number steadily um, increases um, since then. And uh, this reflects the number of ETDs also increase um, in the past years. On the other hand, the state of the art um, machine learning and, uh, and deep learning tools, they're often uh, data driven. Uh, for example, in the uh, pre uh, uh models in computer vision and in natural language processing, uh, the VGD 16 and the VGD 19 and the ResNet 100. Uh, they are uh, trained by larger scale uh, human uh, annotated uh, uh, data in ImageNet and MS Coco. And um, in NLP, uh, the large scale uh, uh, models like BERT uh, and SFNet, they are trained on large corpuses like Book Corpus and English Wikipedia, ClueWeb, and Common Crawl. So, one advantage of this uh, language models is that uh, they are built on self supervised training, which means that they don't need to um, label the data. So, uh, to our best knowledge, there are three ETD collections. The first is the NDLTD, uh, which contains over 6 million ETDs uh, in the world, and, but it it's only contains the records. The second is the ProQuest dissertation and the thesis global, which contains five million ETDs, um, but is not publicly available. So our collection contains uh, 450,000 ETDs, including full text and the metadata records. Um, our ETD collection are um, obtained from over 40 university libraries uh, in two access approaches. In an early time, we um, we download the set maps, and from the set maps, we 
found in the landing pages, and then we download the PDF. And later on, we um, use the, the OEM PMH to obtain the metadata, where we can find the landing page URLs, and we can download the PDF. So the, this, um, this diagram shows the, the crawling pipeline uh, using uh, OAI PMH. Uh, from the OAI portal, we first uh, identified ETDs and the metadata prefix, and that gave you us a um, list of ETDs where we can download the XML metadata, and uh, we can go to the landing page of the ETDs and download the PDFs. So the PDFs are saved in the file system, and the metadata are stored in the the database. We strictly follow the crawl delays in the robust.txt file. We spend a long time to collect all the ETDs and uh, we learned, uh, we met a lot of challenges and learned a lot of lessons. First of all, not all the PDFs are downloadable because some of them have restricted access. Um, the, the second is that the, the HTML DOM structure varies across repositories. So we have to write the custom parsers to parse the HTML files. Um, uh, then not all the metadata has the same fields of information. Uh, for example, the department, uh, discipline, the subject and year issued are often missing. And even if the metadata is available, they uh, often have inconsistent format. As it's shown here, and sometimes it's just missing. So the last uh, uh, is that um, well, even if we strictly followed the crawl delay in the robust.txt file, our request could still be blocked. So we need to do trial and error to find the best um, crawl delay. So this is, um, so far we have collected the 451,000 uh, ETDs from all 42 universities. So this table shows the top 10 universities, but the Ohio State University has the, the largest number of PDFs we collected, about 55,000. So we um, want to emphasize that our collection does not reflect the national uh, collection of the TDs because we uh, did not go to all the university repositories. Um, so this is um, the, the plot which shows the number of ETDs um, distributed over the years. Uh, so you can see that before two, uh, 1945, the ETDs increases very slowly. And after that, it uh, increases gradually. And uh, after 1997, it increases rapidly because that was the year when the ETD initiated initialization was made and uh, a lot of universities start to require uh, students to submit uh, ETDs. So this uh, huge spike here was because a significant number of ETDs uh, dates are not available from the university provided metadata. So we're going to fix that uh, by directly extracting the metadata from the, the PDFs. So we build a repository using the ETD to be collected. The right diagram shows the hierarchical structure of the ETDs. Um, so each folder um, contains the PDF and the XML files. In the future, after we get the, the figures extracted, we're also storing figures um, together with the PDFs. The total size of the repository is 3.4 terabytes. Uh, it's hosted as the ODU Computer Science and mirrors the Virginia Tech University libraries. We also build a database um, which is hosted uh, by MySQL. Uh, here is the schema of the database. Um, the main table is the ETD metadata, which contains 451 rows. We also have a PDF table which contains 463 rows. And that's because uh, the ETD is my one ETD may contain multiple PDFs. And the subjects we ex extract from metadata contains 1.9 million rows. So you can see that there are also other tables which uh, we need to populate using the information extracted from ETDs. So we, um, 
So when we're extracting, uh, so when we're uh, building the, the the database of the TDs, a lot of uh, information were missing. So because of that, we uh, we developed a metadata extraction framework uh, using machine learning. So on the left hand side is the example of the cover page of an ETD. Um, it's a scan ETD, and uh, uh, so using the method extracted, we could extract the title, author, university a degree program advisor and a year. Uh, our papers were published in JCDL 2020 and 2021. So to briefly uh, introduce the, the method we used, uh, we, um, our model was built on uh, a sample of ETDs selected from 1940 to 1990 to make sure that they are scanned ETDs. And the ETDs are selected from uh, multiple universities as shown in this diagram. And uh, we use the condition random field uh, model with uh, a combination of visual and uh, textual features. And uh, the right uh, panel shows the result. Uh, so you can see that uh, the, we have achieved 81% to 97% uh, of um, F1 mirror uh, for all the, the seven metadata fields. So we also built an ETD search engine to make the ETD more accessible. Uh, the search engine was built on MySQL, which was hosting the metadata. And the uh, uh, Elasticsearch was, was um, used, uh, used for indexing the free text and providing the search service. And also the ETD repository, which contains the, um, the files we collected. And uh, all of these are accessible from the web UI. So our current web UI provides the, the basic search functions, including a single text box search, advanced search, autocomplete, spell check, voice queries. We also allow users to vote uh, which ETDs they are favorite and add uh, um, the, their favorite ETDs into um, lists. Uh, we also offer a RESTful search API. So we have a lot of ETDs, so, so what can we do with them? We can build a lot of services. Uh, the first is the segmentation, which we can chunk the big uh, ETDs into smaller um, sections. And the second is its summarization, which we can um, summarize long ETDs into shorter paragraphs so that users don't need to spend a lot of time to read the whole, whole document. We can also uh, classify the subject categories and we can extract and search figures and tables. Um, that we can also uh, do research topic analysis. So here I just want to quote a diagram used by um, Mr. Ingram in the 2020 CN presentation, which we use um, name entity extraction tool called Wikifire to extract name entities from computer science and biology uh, ETDs. So this diagram sh shows there there are many course uh, listed um, name entities uh, in these two domains. So using the ETDs, we can also train uh, language models. And the power of, of the language model depends on the training text. Uh, so general uh, language models like BERT or Roberta uh, are trained on Wikipedia, Books, Corpus, Clue Web, Common Crow, and GigaWorb. And the um, San, Sanbert is the um, for scientific uh, documents was trained on PubMed, which are predominantly for uh, biomedical and life sciences. So we found in our preliminary study that pre-trained ETDs may not work, uh, pre-trained language models may not work well for um, ETDs on certain tasks. Uh, this was likely because of the low uh, vocabulary overlapping. Um, for example, the discipline uh, uh, specific jargons may not <clears throat> exist in the language models. And because of that, uh, these um, terms might be uh, encoded into a, a default vectors. And uh, a lot of the default vectors makes the, the, the language model less meaningful because they don't carry uh, a lot of meaningful information. So training uh, the uh, language models from scratch is, is very expensive. So you can see that it takes several days to train uh, the BERT model and the SAM BERT models uh, using uh, GPUs and, T and even TPUs. And because of that, we choose to fine tune an existing language model. And because many ETDs uh, 
they are uh, in the scientific uh, domain. So we start uh, by using the Sunbird as the base model. We extract the text from uh, about uh, 8,600 born digital PDFs, and that gives us 300 million uh, uh, tokens. So we fine tune the language model using PyTorch transformers. It took only about 20 hours uh, using one video a GPU. So to investigate the impact of front matters, we did two experiments. In the first experiment, we uh, used the raw text extracted from all documents. In the second ex experiment, we removed the front matter, including title page, table of contents, and acknowledgement. So the evaluation result, um, we use um, perplexity uh, to indicate the, the quality of the language model. So um, the perplexity uh, is, um, is commonly used to measure uh, to, to indicate the power of language model to uh, predict an unknown, uh, unknown word. Uh, the lower the score, the better. So the, the evaluation results clearly indicate that the second language model in which the, the front matter is excluded achieved a, a lower perplexity score, which means that the front matter confuses the model and should be excluded. So in the future, we will also perform a further evaluation regarding how um, the language model will um, affect the a classification. So in conclusion, we have collected uh, uh, 450,000 ETDs, including the full text and PDFs and metadata. Uh, we also uh, uh, collected the metadata uh, using the OAI PMH portal from multiple universities. So uh, an analysis of the ETDs, uh, we found that they're inconsistent metadata information which we will fix uh, using machine learning uh, techniques. Um, we also trained the language model using the document we collected based on 300 million tokens uh, extracted from uh, ETDs. So um, our training process uses fewer resources than the, gen than the existing uh, general purpose and the scientific language models. We will investigate whether it achieves comparable performance on subject classification tasks. So um, finally, I want to briefly talk about our ongoing and future work. Uh, the first is to improve the metadata quality. As I mentioned before, we have um, a, a significant fraction of missing and inconsistent uh, uh, data, which we could uh, fix um, by, um, by directly extracting the metadata from the cover pages. And so this table um, illustrates this problem. Uh, so, so you can see that uh, the department names uh, uh, provided by the library metadata are different from the department name that's printed on the cover page of the ETD. We also want to resolve the university uh, names. Of, for, for example, some ETDs uh, use the full name and some ETDs they use the a short name of the university. And also, uh, so, so, so even a space around the AMP stand will uh, Make the, the 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 database to think that they're from two uh, two different universities. And also, we need to improve the language model. Uh, one way is to increase the number of training uh, documents. Uh, we also want to remove the traces of tables and figures from the text. And we, uh, in terms of evaluation, we want to use a unified schema uh, such as the one used in the Microsoft Academic Graph for a subject classification. So one big challenge that we're facing is to obtain clean text uh, um, that's converted from PDF. So we also want to uh, add new features into the user interface. And for example, it wants to provide the multi-modality search uh, by, by allowing uh, users to search uh, chapters, figures, and tables. We also want to improve document summary page, like the one on the right. Uh, by uh, segmenting the ETDs in, by chapters and uh, highlight the concept and provide short explanations. Um, and also we want to uh, convert the existing um, framework like manager extraction, segmentation, 
classification, energy extraction, and knowledge graph uh, generation into uh, web services. That's it. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, welcome any questions.